cataractcoach.com, phaco chop and routine cataract surgery. And remember, your rexus and your incision are your signature. So look at the eye in comparison to the fixation ring. So you can tell this is a small eye. It's a small anterior chamber, patient's hyperopic, the white to white diameter of the cornea is small. I'm gonna start off the case by putting anesthetic in the eye. Now this lidocaine has some epinephrine in it as well, and that does help to dilate the pupil. There are various mixtures of this that are available, or you can certainly mix your own. We'll now put in our dispersive viscoelastic to of course form the anterior chamber, but also more importantly, protect the corneal endothelium. Now it looks like a pretty good dilation here, but keep in mind, it's a small eye. Again, look at the eye compared to the fixation ring, and even the diamond keratome looks so large compared to the eye. So this patient does have a small corneal diameter. And in that regard, we need to make sure we have a good capsorexis. So we adjusted the camera lightings, the microscope lighting here, so we can see better. There's the forceps, and you can measure it out and see how big we have to make this rexus. Now on this eye, it's gonna be just right up against that pupil margin. So while this may seem initially like an overly large caps rexus, it's actually gonna be just about perfect. When we go here through the part of the cataract that has these opacities, don't let go. Don't lose sight of the rexus edge because it's very hard to regrab it. So there's our round rexus completed. We'll go back to the normal lighting setting and I'll do a little hydro dissection. Now with a shallow anterior chamber, I do not want to prolapse the nucleus out of the bag. So we're gonna leave it in the bag, a little bit of hydro dissection, just enough so I can rotate the nucleus. So we'll try to rotate it, and let's see, it looks reasonable. Maybe a little more hydro dissection here, a little bit more there, and we'll try to rotate one more time. And that looks pretty good, that's rotating. Now again, you've learned my trick here, Let's do a little extra aliquot of dispersive viscoelastic to protect that central cornea. Sometimes during the hydrodissection, we can lose some. Here's the phaco probe. I'm going to put this inside the eye. Phaco probe coming in here on a chop mode, so high flow, high vacuum. I'm going to buzz into the nucleus, place the chopper, and there's our first chop, and we have two halves. Now make sure the halves are fully split, and then we're going to use vacuum and try to bring that piece up. Now in this eye, it's not actually that easy, so I may have to sub-chop the nucleus more. That first half didn't come up, that's just okay. Let's bring the other half up. And again, the nucleus isn't as dense as I thought, so let's just bring the whole half, half of the nucleus, the hemonuclear piece, out of the bag, and we can emulsify it here. So this patient had more cortical changes than nuclear. Again, you can tell it's not a very dense nuclear cataract at all. So we'll take that out, and then we'll get the second half, and with a lens like this, I think just that one chop at the beginning is probably sufficient. We can otherwise just feed the, the lens nucleus into the phaco probe, and with a very minimal amount of phaco energy, we clean it up pretty rapidly. So clean that up, looks beautiful. Now time for the irrigation aspiration, cortex removal. Now on cortex removal, of course, we want to make sure we do a good job and completely empty the capsule bag out. But we also want to make sure that this patient doesn't have any zonular issues. And that means look at the capsular rexus edge as you're doing the cortex removal. And of course, that rexus edge should be absolutely stable and still. It should not move. So we'll flip around in various directions here, get all this cortex out. And this is looking pretty clean. And we're going to put in this case, case a single piece acrylic aspheric toric lens. And so our technician's loading that up for us. Let's fill our capsular bag with our cohesive viscoelastic. Now this will really inflate the bag. And again, you'll see now once the eye well goes in the eye, we know the eye well has a six millimeter diameter on the optic. So you can judge the dilation and the rexus size in relation to that six millimeter diameter. So again, in this case, we didn't have to do a lot of phaco chopping. In fact, there was just one primary chop, but that was sufficient. Here's the lens being delivered inside the capsule bag. Comes out beautifully. Technician did a great job in loading that. And then we're gonna allow the lens to open up, make sure it's completely in the capsule bag, both haptics and the optic. And of course, then we'll rotate this lens a little bit. This patient is getting a toric lens. And now again, look how big that six millimeter optic looks. Now you can see that in fact, we did have a five millimeter axis and this patient's dilation is actually less than six millimeters. 
Because once the eye well's in the bag, the edges of the eye well will all but disappear. And that, of course, is six millimeters. So cleaning out all the remaining viscoelastic from the eye, there you can see the torque lens marks. I'm just gonna use our chopper here to help nudge the lens over. It's already pretty well lined up. That looks great. I make reference marks at the beginning of the case on the cornea, and so I just have to line up the lens marks with the corneal marks, and we are good. And of course, account for parallax by using the Purkinje images. So sealing up the incision here, and we're just about done with the case. So definitely encourage you to learn a technique like phaco chop. It does make a routine cataract surgery not only easier and more efficient, but a lot more fun. Thanks for watching.